The crisscross method is really useful when we're trying to write the formula for ionic compounds. So take, for example, calcium chloride. We know that calcium is Ca and that chlorine, the chloride ion, that's Cl. So we have CaCl, but because this is an ionic compound, we have to take the charges into account. So if we look at the periodic table, this one's set up to show us the charges, we can see calcium right here is in group two, so it has a two plus ionic charge. The chlorine, chloride ion, that is right here in the halogens, that has the one minus ionic charge. So for this to be a valid formula, these have to add up to zero, have a net charge of zero. So let's use the crisscross method. We can take this two plus here and move it down here, and we can take this one minus and move it over here. We don't leave the charges in, so let's get rid of those. And we don't usually write one, that's assumed. And that's the formula for calcium chloride using the crisscross method. So now you try one. Pause and write the formula for aluminum bromide. So for aluminum bromide, we have Al and then Br. We said the aluminum, that's three plus, and the bromine is one minus. So let's crisscross them. We'll take the one minus and move it down here. We don't write the minus, so we'll get rid of that. And actually we don't write the one either. And then the three plus, we move that down here. Let's get rid of the plus. And the formula for aluminum bromide is AlBr3. One thing to watch for is when we have something like calcium oxide, CaO. Calcium, that's the two plus, and the oxide, oxygen right here, is two minus. So when we crisscross them, you would just think the two would go here, here, and get rid of our charges, and that would be the formula for calcium oxide. Except that we don't like to have these larger numbers. It'd be better if we could reduce this to calcium one, oxygen one, and we wouldn't write the ones. So if you have the same numbers here, you can reduce that to a lower number. So that's calcium oxide. Pause and give this one a try. We have aluminum and then phosphide, that's the phosphorus right here, we'll put a P. Three plus, phosphorus is three minus. So since they're the same, we would end up with a three and a three down here when we did the crisscross. And we can reduce those, since they're the same, to one. We don't have to write that. Aluminum phosphide, ALP. Let's take a look at one more thing, polyatomic ions. The crisscross method also works with polyatomic ions. So if you see ATE or ITE, that won't be on the periodic table. Those are polyatomic ions, and we need to look those up on a table of common polyatomic ions or memorize them. So let's write what we know. We know we have calcium here, Ca, and we know that calcium is a two plus ionic charge. We can look the nitrate up on this table. Some teachers let you use it, others want you to memorize it, but the nitrate right here, nitrate, is NO3 minus. So now we have the charge, and this minus applies to the whole NO3. We can just do the crisscross method. So we take the two plus, we move it down here, and this is actually a one minus. They don't always write the one after that, so we'll say one minus, and then we can move that down here, but we don't write the minus and we don't write the one, so that's just gonna be calcium there, and then we'll get rid of the plus, and it looks like we're done, but the two is kind of confusing. What does it go to, the whole nitrate or just the oxygen? So we need to be explicit and put parentheses to show that we have two nitrate ions. Since each one is a minus one, we have two times minus one. This side would be minus two. Calcium's two plus. We're done. So this is the formula for calcium nitrate. So pause and try to do calcium phosphate. So we should remember by now that calcium is two plus, and then we can find the phosphate here, which is over here and that's PO4, three minus. So now we just need to crisscross our charges here, put three down here, let's get rid of the charge and put the two over here, get rid of the charge. And remember, we need to now put parentheses around it so it makes sense. 
That's the formula for calcium phosphate using the crisscross method. So pause and give these a try. You may need to go back to look at the periodic table or that table of polyatomic ions. So these are the answers. If you didn't get them right, you have questions, there are links in the description for how to do each one of these. This is Dr. B with the crisscross method. Thanks for watching.